Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, we will be configuring Gateway Load Balancing Protocol, or GLBP. One main difference between GLBP and HSRP, or VRRP, is its ability to provide load balancing. In order to understand GLBP, you need to understand the concept of Active Virtual Gateway, or AVG, and Active Virtual Forwarder, or AVF. Each router that is a member of GLBP group is an AVF of, of its own, or active AVF, and each has an active MAC address assigned to it. The way the load balancing work is, each of the memo routers will take turns in, in replying the ARP request using its own unique MAC address. So when the end device is trying to send the traffic out the local gateway, depending on which virtual MAC address it receives in the ARP reply, it, that's the gateway that it would use to exit the subnet. Within the GLBP group, a member will be elected to become an AVG, so his responsibility is to assign or remove AVF role to a router. In our lab, we will be using two routers, R1 and R2, running GLBP. R1 will be acting as AVG active, and both will be AVF. So let's get started. On R1, we we'll start with going under the fast 00 interface. Then we'll go to GLBP question mark, and you have an option to assign a group number between 0 and 1023. As always, we do 4. And with a different option, we're going to start with name, and we'll call it VLAN 4. Next, GLBP 4. Priority. Actually, we're going to split our configuration into two parts. The first part is going to be configuring any related configuration for AVG. So here we're going to do AVG. We're going to give this router R1 AVG priority of 110. GLBP4. We're going to adjust the timer down to millisecond. 300 millisecond hello timer and one second hello time. GLBP4 and do timer. And here we have a redirect timer. So, what a redirect timer is when an AVF fails, the AVG will resume the fail AVF role by replying the ARP request for up to the redirect timer. So here we're just going to pick a value 10 seconds. And then we have a second timer, which is the timer that determines how long the, a the fail AVF will be kept in the database before it's, uh, it's removed and put back in the pool. So here we're going to do the minimum, which is 610. 610 seconds and you can see that it gives you a warning that the timer is lower than the ARP cache. Usually you want to set this value higher than your ARP timeout just to make sure that the ARP entry for that fail AVF or for the MAC address of the fail AVF is completely gone before you stopped forwarding any traffic build that's, uh, that's usually forwarded by that AVF. Next, we do GLBP for preempt delay. We're going to do minimum of 10 seconds. So, if this particular AVG recovers from a fail state, it needs to wait 10 seconds before it can resume the active role. Okay, so that completes the AVG. Um, configuration part. Now we're going to move on and do a configuration for AVF. So here, you know, GOBP4, waiting, 110, and we're going to tell it a lower. Let's see, there's uh, what's a different option we have? Lower and upper. So we're going to do lower, which means that if the weight falls below this particular value, 
it will give up its uh, active um, AVF role. So here we're going to do 105. Four. Next we're going to do GRBP4 forwarder. Same thing, preempt. But this particular pre uh, preempt is related to AVF role. And we're going to do the same thing with minimum of 10 seconds. Last, we're going to activate our GLBP 4.1. Okay, you can see the virus become an active um, AVG and it's also become an active AVF for a forwarder number one. If you go to our switch and ping 172.16.4.1, you show ARP, and you can see right here this is the virtual MAC address belonging to forwarder number one, so the number designate group number four and forwarder number one. Okay. Next, we're going to copy the config over to R2. Put that down below. Keep same timer. This priority is for AVG, so we want this to be a standby AVG, so we'll make it lower. We're not going to do preempt delay. And for the AVF, we're going to do the same waiting. Leave the preempt, and that should be it. So if we go to R2. I'll give it a few um, seconds. While we're waiting for that, let's bring up uh, Wireshark. We have the R1 F00 interface um, span. So we're trying to s capture GRBP packets and see what it looks like. So here you go. Immediately you can see an advertisement packet. Uh, so the GOBP used the multicast address of 22400102 and a UDP port 3222. On the data payload, it's not so much readable. So there's nothing much to look at here. But that's what the packet looks like. Here, we can do a debug GLBP packets. And you can see the hello that's being sent out for active AVG. Telling us virtual MAC address, as well as the hello that's being received from R2. Okay, let's do show GLBP and see the output that's a lot longer than what we normally see with um, HSRP or VRRP. The first section is again related to um, AVG. It's just telling you this particular router is an active AVG for group number four, having a virtual IP of 4.1 with the hello of 300 millisecond, hold time of one second. Tell you the redirect timer and forwarder timers. Preemptions enable. Local is active. And it's also CR2 being a standby AVG with priority 105. And the load bouncing algorithm by default is round robin. Okay, and it's also see the group members being itself in R2. And here, since we have two routers, we have two active virtual forwarder. So here is designated as forwarder one, being itself is an active forwarder number one, with the virtual MAC address ending with 401. It's also being a 
in a listen state for forwarder number two, which is active on R2, having a MAC address, the virtual MAC address of 402. Okay. So here, if you go to switch one, we can ping. the WAN loopback interface, no problem. So next we can enable authentication. Here we're gonna do keychain key GLBP, key number one, key string lab minutes then under FAS00, zero zero, do GLBP for then, and you can do either MD5 or text. Here we do MD5. We can either input key string or tie it back to the chain, which is what we're doing. GLBP. Done and immediately it says it's complaining about bad authentication coming from R2 and it puts itself into an active state for forwarder 2. The same thing is happening with R2 since it cannot communicate successfully with R1 because of the bad authentication, it's become active for both being an AVG and forwarder number 1. So we need to fix that real quick. Okay, we're gonna copy keychain over to R over to R2. Fat zero zero and GLBP for authentication MD5 keychain key GLBP. Okay. So that should recover in a second. Okay, and I said forward number two, become an active, uh, from active to a listen state. The last thing we're gonna try is tracking. So we're gonna do tracking interface, zero one zero line protocol. So we'll be tracking the WAN interface on our one. Just to make sure track is up. Now we're going to tie it to GLBP, waiting, waiting. track, number one, we're going to decrement by 10. So the priority, the current priority is 110 and we set the lower threshold to 105. So if it's decrement by 10, it will become 100 and cross that threshold and we'll give up the forwarding roll. And we need to do the exact same thing on R2. Okay. Now that, that, now that they're both tracking the interface, so let's start testing. Let's go back to the switch one real quick and look at ARP. Right now is using, it has the ARP entry of the virtual IP tying to the virtual MAC address of the forward number one. So if you do trace to the destination IP, it goes to R1 as expected since it's being active for that particular forwarder. Here, what we can do, we can try the clear IP ARP just to force the router to send out a new ARP request for that s uh, particular IP. And you can see right here immediately, it picked up the virtual MAC address belonging to R2 since the load balancing algorithm we're using is the round robin. And again, if we do trace route, now you can see the packets is now leaving the subnet 
using R2. And that's how the load balancing is achieved. Okay, next we're going to force R1 to fail. So we can easily do that by just shutting down fast zero zero. Okay. And you can see the R2 not as the R1 is no longer on the network. So it took over the ABG role. So moving from the listen to an active state as well as the forwarder one role. Actually forwarder one happens first and then it's ABG. So if you do show GLBP on R2, you can see R2 now or has become an active AVG. Okay, active is local. Since it's no longer seeing R1 on the network, there's no standby router. And moving down to forwarder one, before it was in a listen state, now it's in an active state. And the time to live has start counting down, we set to 610. So once that timer has expired, forward number one would be removed from the table. Okay, so let's bring R1 back. Give it a few seconds. So right now, switch one is still using R2 as a, a gateway. So let's see if R1 has recovered fully. Okay, now R1 has the um, completed preemption. So it's, it's now active again on AVG and also active again on forwarder one and it's just turned listen into in the forwarder two. So the last thing we're gonna try is to force the serial interface on R2 to fail by shutting it down. Before we do that, just to show you, we're still using R2, or switch runs still using R2 as a gateway. So we're going to shut down R2. So right now, the priority on R2 should have decremented down from 110 to 100. So if we do show GLBP for forward and number two, before it's active, now it has become listen. So right here, waiting is now 100, configure 110, and we have crossed that threshold. So R1 has just assume the forward to two active role. So on switch one, even though the ARP entry for the virtual IP is still pointing to what used to be R2 virtual MAC address, but if you traced, it's now going out R1, since R1 has resumed that virtual MAC address. And that's how the redundancy is achieved. Okay, we're gonna bring, let's bring R2 serial interface back. Give it a second. The interface just came up. We have to wait for the preamp timeout or timer to expire, and it did. So now it's become an active forward again for forward in number two. And if we go back to switch one and do your trace, you can see it now switch back to R2 again for that. Okay, so that's it for this lab. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys next time.